Hey people of the VC, it's Andy Cloudy Mulder with episode 15 of my three random records uh, series. Um, just to recap, uh, this is the series of videos, videos that I am showing my 80s metal and hard rock uh, vinyl collection uh, from before uh, the uh, before I started uh, showing. Uh, my new collection updates and things on the the VC. Um, one day I randomly decided to allocate every record a number uh, between 1 and 150, they're not in alphabetical order, complete random order and then uh, as regulars will know I, uh, I ask you guys to pick a number, leave it in the comments and um, I will get round to um, telling you uh, showing you the record that corresponds with that number in uh, a future video. Um, I want to apologize to everybody that's left uh, numbers over the last few episodes. I've got enough to cover me up to about episode 18 already, um, I think. Um, I've been really slow getting these out, so apologies for that. If you've forgotten that you've submitted a number, or uh, if you've forgotten what that number was, check out the um, blog post link uh, in the description. And that'll take you to a page I've got that uh, keeps track of everything. So none of the numbers have been forgotten, and uh, I will um, probably drop you a uh, an IM or something um, just before I'm due to show one of these videos, so you know that your your number hasn't been forgotten and it's coming up. Uh, always looking out for the for new numbers. So uh, have a quick look at the instructions in the description if you're not familiar with this. Uh, welcome to my um, new subscribers. Had a bunch of, uh, of new uh, people joining me last week, so this might be the first time you're, you're seeing one of these. Um, it's not that hard. You'll uh, you'll catch on, and you're you're welcome to anybody's welcome to join in and, and participate in this. You don't have to make videos. Um, you just have to be able to to leave a comment below. Um, so let's dive straight into it. Uh, first number um, number seventy five was selected um, by. Uh, Backwards Metal, uh, Jared, uh, fairly new member of the uh, VC, but a very active one. Um, regular contributor puts up uh, uh, a video a week. I think um, great taste in music. Uh, if you haven't checked out his channel, um, yeah, please do so. There'll be a link up here somewhere. There'll be a link down below. Um, go and check out. Uh, go and check out his channel. Uh, so number 75, that uh, belonged to Tony McAlpine, Maximum Security. So this is this is from 1987, it's a UK pressing. Um, unusual for my collection, it's an instrumental album. Um, I'm not really a big fan of instrumental albums, to be honest with you. Um, this is one of my uh, original... 80s collection that I had when I was a teenager. <laughs> um, I don't remember what um, what persuaded me to buy this at the time. Um, maybe I read about him in, in Metal Hammer or, or Kerrang or something and decided to go with it. Um, but um, I've not played it um, for years and years and years. Uh, certainly since I've started um, Buying vinyl again the last couple of years. I've not listened to it um, probably since the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, I've got to say, it sounds absolutely uh, amazing. So the, the vinyl itself is, I mean, it's on Vertigo standard. It's one of these really wafer thin um, uh, vinyl records. And you just kind of wouldn't expect too much of it. But the I actually had to turn my amp down from the, the the standard volume I normally have because it just um, the sound is just really rich but really loud as well. Um, so really well um, produced. I was just amazed by the, the, the sound quality that uh, I was getting from it. Um, it's your kind of self-indulgent um, neoclassical guitar uh, virtuoso performance uh, from Tony McAlpine. Uh, it plays all guitars, keyboards. Um, on the album and bass, um, what well, there's twelve tracks on here. Uh, without looking at the cover, I couldn't tell you the name of any of them. I don't really um, 
I can't really uh, connect with instrumentals as 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 well as I do with uh, songs with uh, with lyrics. But uh, everything, you know, memories came flooding back when I listened to it. Uh, it's a good, it's a really good album. He does it really well. Even the um, I think it's uh, the uh, the Chopin um, cover. Did you say it's a cover? I guess most of them are. Uh, Etude number four, Opus ten. Uh, I think that's the one that's just played exclusively on the piano, and um, I even like that one. I mean, it being instrumental, mostly it blends into the background, and I kind of forget I'm listening to it. But it's it's a fairly enjoyable album. I've got it in my collection. Um, nothing special on the inside. Um, nothing more to say about it, really. Uh, yeah. So, thank you, Jared, for. Uh, Contributing a number, feel free to um, put another one in and, uh, and get yourself into a, a future episode. Uh, next up, uh, number 96. Um, this was uh, John Waller. I hope I've uh, pronounced your, uh, your name correctly. Uh, so, John, you, uh, some time ago now, I think you even, I think your channel name is even different now. Was it The Final Frontier, I think, when you might have put this number in? So, uh, apologies for taking so long to get around to this. Um, but you chose number 96, and number 96 happens to be a very, very important album uh, for me. It's one that I've mentioned uh, a few times. I've commented on numerous people's um, videos. In fact, it was even shown in um, uh, Scott Waters' um, uh, recent 1985 um, epic, The Top 50. And this is the first heavy metal album I ever owned. Uh, bought for me as a Christmas present by my sister. That's uh, Iron Maiden's classic live album, 1985, uh, on EMI, um, Live After Death. Uh, considering it's the first record I had, it's still in very good playable condition. Um, not too much crackles, there's a few surface uh, scrapes on it. Um, but I think everybody who's anybody that's into metal knows about this album. Um, Gatefold, I'm going to show it anyway because I've been dying to show this off on a video for um, quite some time, waiting for this number to come up. Um, my memories of this, I mean, I never, I've never saw them on, on tour. I've never actually seen Iron Maiden um, live. Um, Something that has uh, been rectified pretty soon. More on that in the uh, in the next video. Um, but as a kid, I would look at the live pictures in here, and um, just um, imagine what it would have been like to have seen this show. So this is the uh, the first disc. It's a double album, of course, with the uh, lyrics and uh, and band pictures and. Uh, yeah. Second disc, the, to me, the classic lineup of Maiden Dickinson, Murray, Smith, Harris, and McBrain. Again, lots more pictures. Um, I also had the VH, this on VHS uh, video. Uh, I also played that to death. I've still got it somewhere, but I couldn't find it to, to do this video. I think I've got it in a box up in the, in the loft somewhere. I'd like to be able to show that as well. But that's a uh, video that I played um, over and over and over again. Uh, absolutely loved it, especially when you see the big uh, Egyptian Eddie uh, come out onto the stage. Uh, it must have been absolutely truly spectacular to have, to have seen that live. Um, so this pressing comes with the, I guess the little souvenir, not really a tour book, but uh, a few pages, full colour, a list of the dates, countries of the world. There we go. There's the Welsh flag. Uh, so I'm wondering if they actually, yeah. So they played in uh, in Cardiff, St David's Hall. So that would have been where I would have seen them. But October the seventh, nineteen eighty-four, thirteen years old. Um, I would never have been able to go at that age. <sighs> So I can just blame all the parents, I guess. Not that I, mean, not that I think I actually knew about this album at the time, or the uh, or the fact they were playing. 
got uh, great pictures, great live pictures. Uh, of course, a very different maiden now, not so much spandex. But yeah, absolutely um, my favourite album. I mean, if you were to if you were to flatten me out uh, so I could play on a record player, this is the tune that would we'll be playing. This is the album that we'll be playing. Um, custom labels, all four sides have the same label. Obviously, different track listing, but uh, that's to be expected. Um, yeah, from the first uh, crackly introduction of of Churchill's. Um, speech and then diving into Aces High uh, it's just great track after great track um, The Trooper, Revelations, Flight of Icarus, Power Slave, Number of the Beast, Hallowed Be Thy Name, Iron Maiden, Went to the Hills, Running Free I mean there's not a bad track on here and and there not being a bad track on here actually led me to um, big dilemma when I was um, when I was a kid and I wanted to listen to this on my uh, on my, uh, my Walkman um, playing time is 100, 100 minutes and 8 seconds and you obviously can't fit 100 minutes and 8 seconds onto a, a single C90 uh, cassette so I literally had two or three uh, different C90 cassettes uh, just with this recorded on where I would kind of, I'd have to pick one or two songs that I couldn't add onto a particular mix so then I would kind of mix it up and it was always it was kind of gut-wrenching to think, what songs am I not going to put on the C90? So if you know this track list, which, and you had to cut three songs from this list, what three songs would you choose not to have on there so you could listen to the album? That's not a competition, that's just a, <laughs> leave, a leave a comment below. Um, but, um, so Churchill's speech on here, um, what I actually found out is the when he originally made that speech in the House of Commons in 1940, it wasn't recorded. So the, um, the famous uh, recording that we hear now was actually a re-recording of that speech. Um, I don't know if that's true. If, I, if I'm talking rubbish then, then see me honest in the comments. And uh, But I thought that was quite an interesting in story. Uh, first, first three sides on here from Long Beach, Rio, California. Screen for me, Long Beach. Um, fourth side from uh, London's Hammersmith Odeon. Yeah, so and the cover art as well. I mean, this this being the first time I have just spent ages. Just you know, it's just incredible, incredible artwork. And um, and the detail as well, and all the the little not so much extras, but just the things to to look for um yeah so we've seen this little cat before uh also appears on the somewhere in time album the cat with a halo um what else we've got we've got live and proud live with pride sorry um iron maiden's message that they would never lip sync and they would always sing uh live at their gigs um I kind of like the way this lightning here points directly to uh, Derek Riggs's signature signature mark on the the gravestone there. Uh, another interesting one. So yeah, so here is a uh, here lies Faust in in body only. Now, that's just supposed to be a reference to the German legend about Faust who sold his soul to the devil so hence here he's there in body only but this always puzzled me because I thought so when you die your soul is supposed to leave your body so surely every other uh, grave just contains a body and, and that's it um, that was a bit of a strange one that but uh, there we go um, yeah and you see the message at the front, so that is not dead, which can eternal lie, yet with strange eons even death may die. So that's obviously a HP Lovecraft quote um, uh, from his uh, The Nameless City. And I had that written on the front of my English uh, exercise book uh, at school. And I remember the teacher actually being really impressed that I knew uh, Lovecraft, that I could quote his work. <laughs> 
But little did he know that I didn't have a clue who Lovecraft was at the time, and I was just put it on because I thought it was cool because it was on the front cover of, uh, of Iron Maiden. So there we go. This is... Um, I've talked about that longer than I expected, but uh, it is truly one of my favourite albums. If I could only ever be left with one album, I would take this one with me. Um, not... I don't know if, it, if it's the best album, the best music in the world, but it is one that means so much to me that I would, uh, I would never ever be without. Right, oh, 15 minutes already. Time to move on. So that's two down. Thank you, Jonathan, uh, for that. Uh, again, uh, check out his channel. Fairly new member of uh, the the VC, but um, puts up some interesting videos. And again, I will leave a link above and below to his channel. Um, and. Last but not least, a number 140 by uh, Louis Ferrer, uh, the third. Yep. Um, so you have number 140, Louis, and that is uh, another uh, classic from uh, this time from 86. Uh, so I think we're on 85, and 86, and 87 uh, today. That's uh, obviously Among the Living uh, by uh, Anthrax. 1986, this is on Island Records, and it's a UK pressing. Uh, produced by Eddie Kramer. Um, quite famous. Bowie, Clapton, Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, Kiss, to name but a few. Rolling Stones as well, I think. So uh, they got a big name in for their, uh, their third album. A lot of people would argue that this is their best. Um, not me though. I'd argue with myself as to uh, as to which was their best uh, between Among the Living and uh, uh, Spread the Disease. Uh, Inner has their lyrics. It tends to be, I think, to be fair, whichever one I've heard the most recent. I tend to think that's the one I, I like the most. But uh, I really can't uh, choose much between. Uh, there you go. Um, I'm on the living and, and, and spreading the disease. They've both got killer tunes on. Um, so, as usual, um, Anthrax like their, uh, their songs about uh, either a messed up world or, or fictional references. So we have Among the Living and A Skeleton in the Closet, which are based on Stephen King novels, The Stand and um, Apt Pupil, respectively. Uh, we've got uh, Randall Flagg from The Stand, depicted on the uh, the front cover. Uh, Caught in a Mosh is, I guess, their signature tune when it comes to, to gigs. I don't think they'd ever play a gig without playing Caught in a Mosh now, surely. Uh, I Am the Law, tribute to Judge Dredd, Ethel Nicotessin. Um, I always had that written all over my books because I thought it was clever and no one would know. Um, so that's a tr it's not really a tribute to John Belushi, but basically uh, a song about John Belushi and his um, screwed up his life on on drugs to his uh, his ultimate demise uh, due to drugs. Um, Indians is a song I, I I don't struggle with. Sometimes I really really like it, and other times I think it's it's not the weakest song on the album, but sometimes it doesn't fit, and I can't explain why I feel that way. Um, I have it on 12 inch single um, as well. Um, yeah, it's a strange one. I can't explain it, but sometimes I think I don't like that song, and then I hear it, I do like it, and, and vice versa. I, I don't know. Um, I'm babbling. Um, but anyway, so I saw them twice uh, in this year on this tour, once at the uh, Monsters of Rock Festival in Castle Donington, and uh, the second time in my hometown in, uh, in Cardiff in St David's Hall, where I just said that Maiden had played uh, three years earlier, uh, on the Among the Living tour. Um, I still have the tour brochure for that as well, uh, and again in fairly good condition considering the uh, what I was like as a kid. Um, so there's the, you saw them on November the 9th, in Cardiff, so what, 29 years, 21st of October today, so 29 years ago today, they were playing at Bolzano, Italy, at their Sport Palace. Um, there's a little bit of a story about uh, the tour, and just some great live uh, pictures and pictures of the band. 
Uh, I used to have that uh, Drug T-shirt a long time ago. It was uh, Joey and Frankie. And again, yeah, just typical tall brochure, lots of pictures. A uh, bit of a photo diary of them in uh, Japan, by the looks of it. And uh, yeah, and uh, discography uh, at the end. So that's pretty cool. Glad I've still got this. Um, so there we have it. That's uh, that's record three of this bunch of uh, three random records. Um, let me know what you think of these in the comments as usual. If you want to get involved, uh, leave a number. Again, check out the blog post link below. Um, it'll make it all clear, very easy to spot which numbers are uh, still available and which have gone before. Uh, I've also got links to the various videos that I showed each of them in. So if you see any of the other records I've shown before that you've not seen me show, you'll get a link there to the uh, the video and you can, you can check that out. Um, Thank you for watching. Thanks again to all the, the new subscribers. Thank you very much to the old subscribers. I'll be back on Monday, actually, for a, a bit of a special uh, video. So hopefully you'll be able to check that out too. Thanks for watching. Catch you again soon. Cheers.